Hello and welcome. I'm Elliot Richards and I'm the new China correspondent. I'm here in Shanghai to test drive this, the Xpeng P7. And this is fully charged. Just before we get to the P7 review, let me give you a little bit of context in about 30 seconds about me. I've been living in China for 12 years now and I've been following the whole EV, sustainable technology arena in China for a number of years. I've driven everything from a NEO to the Xiaopeng to BYD and today we're going to test the P7. We're actually sat in my Xiaopeng G3, the, the very first car from Xiaopeng and we're going to do a review on this car in another episode soon, but let's go and see what the P7 is like. I was lucky enough to get two goes in the P7. First test was around a predetermined track, then later on in this video, I get to go on public roads to really see how it feels and handles in everyday conditions. Oh, I think you can see from the profile here, it's quite a good looking car. Um, 19 inch wheels, huge range, 706 kilometers NEDC mind you, and a very attractive package. This really does take Chinese cars to the next level. And this is from a company which two years ago didn't have any cars out. So this is the front end of the P7 and this is a whole light bar along here. Now you can program it uh, inside the car, there's a number of different settings uh, to light up, you know, like do this, like kit in Knight Rider, uh, but the actual proper lights are here. Uh, these are just fancy lights, I suppose. Um, the, the, the front of the car is very similar to the G3. The front of the G3 is um, quite similar, the black area. Um, and there's actually front boot space, uh, but they've got 440 liters of boot space in the back. It's very deep um, and you can fit a lot of stuff in there. A couple of other things is this has a liquid cooled battery um, and it's got something called Sentinel mode, very similar to Tesla uh, in that respect. Um, and I think you'll agree that this is a very good looking package. Now, the, this is the performance version, the basic version, basic version, um, still has the same battery pack. Um, I think it's only got two wheel drive instead of four wheel drive. Um, and essentially that starts at about 26,000 pounds for this. So beating the Model 3 over there and really very competitive uh, value for money. This is the performance version. This is 36,000 pounds, that's four wheel drive, um, extra horsepower. It's got about 460 horsepower in total. What this car is really set up for is the inside. Now the biggest difference between this and the Tesla Tesla feels spartan in comparison. This does feel like a living room. Now I've been told, you know, this screen does everything. You know, I won't go into the tech today, but this is definitely an upgrade from my G3. Um, and it's just a very comfortable place to be. Now it's got LED lights all the way around, which can be changed. Like I said before, 18 speakers. So this really is about the experience inside the car. So the car has two charging ports, both at the rear. One's a fast charger, one's a regular charger. Now let's jump in the back seat, just to have a quick look at the space. Nice door handles. And we're very lucky. Oh, this is plush. This is very nice. Um, leather seats all around. Um, obviously one, two, three speakers here, uh, just, just for me. And this is all, you know, thought through very well. And I could easily sit here for a long time. This, this is actually probably one of the softest seats I've sat in, in a Chinese electric car. So they really are thinking about that long, long road trip. One thing a little bit different about China is how they're selling the car. This is an exclusive customer preview day and there's a Tesla Model 3 behind us. And there's a guy going around with a speaker telling the customers, ah, oh, Tesla, doesn't have this, P7 does have this. Quite a unique way to sell cars in China, don't you think? Let's talk about statistics. 
Now this car, 706 kilometers NEDC range, 80 kilowatt hour battery pack, not to 100 in 4.3 seconds, if that concerns you, and I just tried it out and it, it's quite fast and very comfortable. Brembo brakes, fast charging. You can charge, you get 120 kilometers of range in 10 minutes if you use the Xiaopeng charging network. Full battery takes uh, about an hour and a half using the, the, the fast charger. Okay, so here we are in the Xiaopong P7. Uh, this is my second drive. We've got one minute to test drive it around the circuit. We're in sports mode. So here we go, put the foot down. 4.3 seconds to 100. Brembo brakes at the front to slow you down. There you go, that was quite, quite exciting. Now we've got the uh, sat nav going. So this is an advanced, let's do a slalom. And we're going around, and we'll go around the second slalom. And it's super comfortable in here. This chair feels like a, a leather armchair. Um, and it's really easy to drive. The steering wheel's got a flat bottom, which is slightly unusual. Um, great visibility over the bonnet. Now we're gonna do the left to right. Ooh. It's very responsive. It's much more responsive than the P3, uh, G3, sorry. Um, and now we're going to the circuit bit, the bumpy bit. Now we're almost at the end. We're almost finished our little test drive. Um, 80 kilowatt hour battery pack. This is the performance version. It costs about 37,000 pounds. Always oh, very grippy this. It is a big car though, you know. It's not a small car, it's bigger than the Model 3, which you'll probably see over there, which they're comparing it to. But you know, it's a lovely thing to drive. So after that very short test spin, I was lucky enough to have a proper go round Shanghai to see how it felt on the road. So I, I do have to say what my first impressions are of uh, this car. And the first impression I do have is that the seat is ridiculously comfortable. I I haven't ever been so comfortable in one, a car, or two, an electric car. This is taking comfort to another level. Now, where are we going? Let's go this way, if we can. And, oh, that, that is smooth and it is very fast. But we're not going to go too fast today because there's lots of speed bumps. Okay, that was fast. Now, <laughs> now the brakes are really good, actually. I would say that my, my G3 brakes are actually quite grabby, and uh, the car is lurching like that. But with this car, it's much smoother. And that's kind of what summarizes this car, is that it's very smooth and easy to drive. So this is a car, one, built for performance, but two, built for those long journeys. And you want to be in comfort, and you want to easily drive this. So this currently has L2.5 uh, self-driving capabilities. L3 self-driving will come this Christmas um, and that's full self-driving mode. I think there's some laws which need to change slightly in China um, but it's, it's coming this year. Now it, you know it does have all the speakers, it has the ambient lighting, you know this is built for cruising, this is built for you know just relaxing, sitting back, sticking on cruise control, sticking on L3 driving capabilities and just just leaving it and listening to the music. Um, it has to be probably the most uh, refined electric car that I have been in. You know, I'm, I'm struggling to think of superlatives here because it is incredible value for money when you think about it. So the base version, this is not the base version, is that 26,000 pounds. So 20, 220,000 RMB. The, the version this is, is the performance version, is 333,000 RMB after subsidies. That um, is still very good value for money and really does put it in Tesla Model 3 um, category. I've got a straight bit here. Oh, sticker's falling off. 
but it's not it's not so fast that I feel like sick it's comfortably fast it's rapid very rapid to overtake one thing I would say this is quite a large car and you know I think it is bigger than the model 3 so not for me not ideal I live in quite a tight um, housing compound in downtown Shanghai you know this is a big car um, it's going to be relatively difficult to park however it does have the self parking ability so that does make it very attractive I mean so really what what I'm saying with this car so this is you know <laughs> this is a car produced by a company who most people have not heard of who have only been around for a few years and have produced a car of this quality now I drive the G3 as I've said multiple times uh, and I haven't had any complaints so far I've had 5,000 kilometers nothing's broken it drives fine it's super comfortable there's really nothing to complain about or worry about and I think this goes such a long way to changing people's perceptions about Chinese cars and Chinese electric cars which is really fantastic because when this goes to Europe this will be one of the first EVs to go to Europe and I think that it's so important to make that good first impression because every single manufacturer Chinese manufacturer who's gone to Europe has failed every single one there hasn't been a single success story but I think with this car this really changes the game and this really does bring another option to people who are looking for a electric sedan with a long range you know I've driven I've driven a lot of um, Chinese electric cars over the years you know from the the very high-end sort of neo cars which are about 50,000 pounds know, big big Jeeps with uh, five six hundred kilometers of range but this is probably the the nicest experience in here now I'd say in terms of like the chassis uh, it's it's really very responsive and quite stiff um, and you can really feel that the batteries are all on the floor uh, and it really keeps it planted to the road um, I, you know I'm, I'm struggling at the moment to find much to criticize about this car especially for that that money it's just you know this is twenty six thousand pounds that's all we've got time for hope you've enjoyed that i'll be test driving other chinese cars in the coming months plus checking out some of China's massive renewable energy installations, electric bikes, buses, and maybe even some ships. So please subscribe. If you want to support the show, please have a look at our Patreon page or YouTube memberships. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.